Hello again. Uh, we're going to continue with more exercises about pointers, uh, particularly looking at arrays today. So first of all, we're going to make an array of integers and use a pointer to point to a number in the middle of the array. Then we'll try using p of x for different values of x and see what happens when we move the pointer around. So first of all, let's go right back into Python Tutor, the best way I think to, to see how this stuff is working, um, and try this out. And we are, of course, in Python Tutor. All right, so we're going to make an array of integers. So it's numbers, um, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. We use a pointer to point to a number in the middle of the array. So, um, so our pointer p is going to be the address of numbers at three. And let's try doing some outputting using namespace standard. Uh, we're going to output uh, p of zero. So let's see what happens here. First of all, I set up an array of six numbers, one to six. Now, p is going to get the address of the element at index three of numbers. So that's going to be this one. So now p is pointing here, and we're going to print out p of 0. Well, p is not numbers. They're referring to different things. And when I access p of 0, what I actually print out, you can maybe take a guess, is actually going to be the number 4. Because the way that numbers in p are treated by C++ is very similar, not necessarily identical. Um, there are some variations of you know, things that you can do with numbers and or with p that you can't do with numbers. But what you can do is you can actually move this arrow around and by doing so, treat p as its own mini array within numbers. So let's say, for instance, that I want to do something like the following p plus plus. You can't do this with an array, but you can do this with a pointer. And let's see what happens. So p starts here, and let's say I want to do p plus plus. Well, am I adding one to f f f o o o b c c to turn it into b c d? No. What I'm actually going to be doing is telling the computer, hey, move one integer because this is an integer pointer further in the computer to the next address. Well, that actually happens to be right there. And now when I print out p of zero, I'm going to print out p of five. And conveniently, you can actually do more values than uh, just zero. And in fact, here you actually can use negative values to do something that you might want to do. So for instance, in this scenario, I'm going to declare p um, starting from pointing at the 4. I'm going to shift it over. And I'm going to print out p of minus 2. And this, as you might suspect, actually means take the arrow back two steps and print out the number that's there. So. What this means is that you can actually take advantage of the fact that pointers, when you add or subtract to them, simply move one space forward or backward in memory. And you can use this to access different parts of an array if you need to. It is important that you keep track of how big the array is, because once you go out of bounds, who knows what can happen. But as long as you are within the bounds, you can actually access different parts of this simply by adding or subtracting from your pointer. OK, let's uh, put this into Jupyter and then go on to the next one. Uh, it's a new file, please. This is example one. And let's take a look at number two. Write a function that returns a pointer to the maximum value of an unsorted array of doubles. Do not sort the array. Okay. So let's make an unsorted array of doubles. And this is a function. So we'll say, oops, so we'll say void find max, and it takes an unsorted array of doubles. So double um, numbers. I probably wrote that wrong, but that's OK. Uh, oh, and it's not void, because it says it returns a pointer to the maximum value. So that means it's going to return a double pointer. Now, I need to find the maximum uh, one in here. Also, because I am passing an array, I need to know the size. So we'll say in size. Now I can write a loop, i is 0, i is less than the size. And in here, I want to try to find the maximum. So the first candidate for the maximum is the first element of my numbers. So 
Um, we'll get a pointer to that. And actually, the way that you would do so, there's two possibilities. One option is to say um, double pointer max pointer is the address of numbers is zero, but this is actually writing more than necessary. In fact, you can actually do this a little cleaner by simply doing numbers. Because it turns out that when we pass this array, we're actually basically passing a pointer, which means that even though this is defined as it is here, I can actually create a pointer, point it to the same address from which my numbers begin, and I have grabbed the address of that first element. And the reason I want to do this is because if I find that the value at max pointer is less than the value that I find at numbers i, that means I have found a better candidate for the maximum value. And I can update max pointer to be numbers plus i. Just like in our previous exercise where we showed that we can just take a um, take a pointer and add to it, we're going to do the same thing here. We're literally going to just move forward in the array to wherever we need to be. And at the end, we can return our max pointer. So now let's set this up. We have our numbers and these should be unsorted. So let's put several different numbers in here. We'll make some of them have decimals. And now I want to make a uh, max pointer to be find max of numbers, comma, looks like there's five of them. Let's see what happens. Okay, so from the beginning, here is my array. And when I go to my function, what you actually see is that, look, numbers here, despite me declaring it as an array, is actually a pointer which means that we can use our pointer arithmetic, which is really important. So now when I set up my max pointer uh, variable, I'm gonna start by just having it point to the same thing that this is pointing to, that first element. Now I'm gonna go through all of my array. Um, okay, this one's pretty boring because I put the, the biggest number first. So let's put the biggest number somewhere else. Uh, I'll make this a 9.5, I think that's more interesting. And maybe we'll make this a one and we won't change the others. Do a slightly better example, perhaps. Okay. So what we see is that the pointer, when it points to this one, is pointing to a, um, well, it's pointing to one, so we don't do anything right away. Next, when i is one, we're gonna compare what is our max pointer pointing to, one, versus what's actually at numbers i. Well, it's 3.1, that's bigger. So we're going to change our maximum pointer to be numbers plus one plus i, which means go right there. And then we'll do the same thing again. We see that 3.1 is less than 9.5. So numbers is this address, and we're going to add two to it to get this address. And there we go. And 9.5 is the biggest. So we're not gonna make any changes after that. And we return this pointer to 9.5, which means in our original function, we're now pointing right there. And this is how we can conveniently use this, um, this pointer arithmetic to simply add i to the memory address of our array to grab whatever element we need to go there. Note that we didn't have to use ampersand for any of this function. We never had to actually use that operator because we can just treat numbers as a location in memory and add to it, or if we necessarily subtract to it, for everything we needed to do. Okay. Now let's uh, put this back in Jupyter and then we can move on to the next. Uh, duplicate, example two, done. All right, example three. Uh, write a function that takes a string and a character pointer, my character pointer. The function returns a new pointer that points to the first appearance of my character pointer's character in the string. So let's try this out. So it's going to return a pointer to a character. So a character pointer. We can call this uh, find character. 
It's going to take a string, um, and a word, and a character pointer, my char pointer. And the idea here is that I want to go through, and as soon as I find an appearance of the character this is pointing to in the string, return a pointer to that character itself. So let's try this out. Um, we similarly want a loop, except this time instead of size, it's going to be word.length. And if my loop character pointer is pointing to the same letter that's at word i, then I want to return the address of word i. And if I don't find it, I'll simply say did not find. And we'll return N-U-L-L-P-T-R. This is a null pointer. And this basically means point to nothing in memory so that we don't confuse it with pointing somewhere in memory that actually does matter. So uh, let's make a string. That's my name. We'll make a character letter, which is going to be H. We'll look for the H. Uh, and then we will make a um, pointer result be find the character word and the address of my letter. I suppose, um, yeah, that should, that should do it. Let's see what happens. Okay, now this is where unfortunately Python Tutor has some limitations. Namely, it's not super great at showing you the contents of the string, which is actually itself also kind of complicated to do. So um, you can see here, this is its attempt to represent storing my name in the word, uh, which it's not super great at doing. So my letter is H and I'm going to try to find, so I'm pointing to the H I want to find that inside of my um, word. So the first time I run it, find it, it's not there. You'll see it's at index 0, 1, 2, 3. So we're not going to expect to find it until index 3. And then we will return the address of that. And where is it? So it's in FC7BCFB. And you can see over here we have FC7B. C98. And essentially what this means is that between here and here in the computer is the memory address of the letter we're looking at. But let's say that we want to actually see it. What we can do is we can actually over here output the addresses of each letter as we go by. So let's do that. Print F star P. And this is the address of word I. Now let's take a look at what happens as we run our program. Uh, oops, slide. Here we go. So the address of the first character is BCF8. The next character is BCF9, BCFA, BCFB, and that's what we're going to return. It's BCFB. You'll notice that this is stored in a slightly different place in memory. And this is where it's important to understand that strings, words, are not the same as arrays. We can treat them very similarly. You know, we can see that we're actually able to grab the address of a letter, we're able to iterate through, um, use indexing to grab individual letters from the word, but this is, word is not a object. Oh, sorry, word is not a pointer, it is an object, which means that it has more to it than simply an, an array of letters. And so this pointer here that, um, that basically shows where some of the memory for this word is associated with it, doesn't actually match where some of these letters happen to be. And so this is something to keep in mind is that it is much, much trickier and you need to be able to, you need to basically not make assumptions about the addresses of text in a string because they actually can be in many different places potentially depending on what kind of string you're working with. It's not as simple as working with a, um, with a array, 
Uh, and it also means that, for instance, we can't simply take word and add a number to it because the computer will say, hey, word is a, um, a string. You can't add a number to a string. It doesn't make any sense. So here we actually do have to use ampersand word index i in order to actually grab the character. But we can double check that we actually got it correctly by at the end simply printing out, did we get the letter? And if we did, then pointer result should point to h. Let's double check that that worked. Uh, oh, it did not. And why is that? Well, when you think about it, um, the so our word that we are passing to um, find character was passed as a value. And so when I try to pass, um, so you see here there's a little skull here, and this means it's pointing to memory outside of bounds. And that's because the string that I have here is not the same as the string that was in this function. So in order to fix this, I actually need to, despite not modifying it, pass my word by reference. And it'll look like nothing has changed in terms of you know, running the program, although now we do have a pointer to our word. And when we reach the end, we can actually see now that the addresses are matching. This 98 is actually the same address as what's here. So it turns out what was the problem before was that we actually were dealing with two different strings. And so we were returning the address of a letter in a string, but not the address in the string that we wanted. And now I actually can print out my H, it shows up because we've actually now fixed this pointer to point to the correct space in memory. So lots of go things going on here. Um, I would say the important takeaways are strings are complicated. There's a reason that it's not so easy to simply see all the letters that are inside of it. But also this was being a little sneaky. Uh, it was trying to trick us because we didn't actually see when I removed this ampersand that the word had been copied. It didn't actually show up. Uh, if you notice over here, where's the string? <laughs> It's not here, right? But, but it should be. How else are we accessing this word? Well, it turns out that secretly in here, there actually is another um, another string that's hiding out and it's a copy of this one. It's not the same thing, which means we're not returning a pointer to the right string that we wanted. In order to make sure that we get the correct one, we need to grab the address of the right word. And now at the end of the day, we're able to print out that H and this is pointing to the correct spot in my string. Okay, one last exercise, then we'll wrap up. All right. Pointers to pointers. So unsurprisingly, pointers can point to basically anything, which means they can point to each other. Um, now that being said, every type has to be specific, which means that if you want to point to a pointer, it can't point to other things. It can only point to pointers, and it has to be two specific kinds of pointers as well. So, uh, oh, before I wrap up, let's, uh, let's make sure we put this into Jupyter. Okay, now we're going to write a new function. It's gonna take an array of pointers. And it's gonna take a pointer to a pointer. And it's gonna move that second parameter to the element of the array pointed at the address in memory with the largest value. So lots of pointing going on here, but let's you know break this down into a smaller problem. We don't return anything, it looks like, which means that this is void. Now, it's going to take an array of pointers, uh, and let's, for the sake of simplicity, make them integers. So int star pointers array. We're gonna take a integer pointer to a pointer, which means it's gonna have two asterisks and we'll call this PTR to PTR. Uh, and I suppose we also need the size of the array. Whoops. I guess I found a shortcut that <laughs> does code checking. Um, we'll have to check that out at some time. Okay, uh, we want a loop that goes for the entire size. 
Uh, and sort of like one of our previous exercises, we want to find the largest value. But what we're looking for is not the largest thing that is being pointed to, but it's the largest address in memory. All of these pointers in here have a value, which is an address. We want to just grab whichever is the biggest of those. So we'll assume originally that um, pointer to pointer is going to be uh, the first element, which is pointers. <laughs> Um, so of my array, we'll assume that perhaps the largest value is the very first one. Then we'll go through the rest. We don't. We can skip the first one. If pointers i is larger than what our pointer to pointer is pointing to, then we will move pointer to pointer to be pointers plus i. And we'll return pointer to pointer. So let's make something to test this with. We're going to need an integer, a bunch of integers. So let's say a is 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, let's actually make them go in different random sizes 6, 3, 8, 5. And now my integer array of pointers is going to be the address of a, the address of b, the address of c, and the address of d. And we're going to make an integer pointer to pointer. And we'll say find, uh, oh, so we call it find car, but it's find ptr. Pointers, pointer, two pointer, and the size is four, because there's four elements in this little array. Now, let's see what happens. And I know this is not going to work because, uh, well, that was also an error. Um, oh, yeah, we're not supposed to return anything, duh. <laughs> um, but there's another error here as well. And hopefully you have caught it by now. Um, I left it out by intention just so that we can see what happens if we don't do it correctly. But we're going to fix it right after. So should at least compile this time. <laughs> OK, so what do we have here? We have a, B, C, D, which have different numbers. We can see here that conveniently the addresses are actually in order. Um, let's actually mix them up inside the array just for the sake of making things a little more interesting. B, C. Okay, so A, B, C, D. And we're going to have our, our array point to different parts of this. So we're going to point to A, then point to C, then point to D, then point to B. And so if you look at all of these addresses, the biggest one is the one that ends in BB4. So if our function works correctly, our pointer to pointer should point to FFFOOBB4. When we go into our function, hopefully now, maybe now you've noticed the mistake, um, we have our array of pointers. We make our pointer to pointer point to here. And now you definitely should see the mistake. But we want it to point to this. This is the largest one. So we go through. We see the next is actually bigger. BBO is bigger than BA8. We go again. We can see this is even bigger. Uh, and the last address is smaller. So we skip it. And so at the end, <laughs> we have done nothing useful because we did not pass our pointer to pointer by reference. So we're going to need to do that here. And now if we do this correctly, you'll see here that we are passing this pointer by reference, which means when we change the value in line 11, we're going to make this point up here. And then we're going to move that pointer again. Now it points to one, and then we'll move it one last time. So it points to the largest address. And now we are done. And when we leave this function, we have successfully pointed our pointer to pointer to the biggest address in our array. But in order to do this, we needed to pass a pointer to a pointer by reference. And I think if you're able to follow this example, you've basically um, 
gotten down everything that you need to know about pointers. I don't think we get much more complicated than this. So hopefully this was something that you could follow. If not, you're always free to rewatch it. I encourage you to practice these exercises as much as you can, um, and also to do as much of it in Python Tutor as possible, because this really helps you to understand where are all these arrows going into and coming from. Uh, without a tool like this, I think it's very hard to actually see what is happening when you're moving these pointers around. So try it out as much as you can, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.